sorry, five five, and they'll show you a particular rule you can use. It's, it's the simplest. There are a lot more. So twenty nine zero to five x squared minus nine. And why is zero Okay. So should I be able to graph x squared minus nine? What are the roots of x squared minus nine? So I'm going to graph a parabola in general to find its roots. Useful. Three, three, negative, three, three negative three. So one, two, three, three. So we've got a root there and a root there. It's x squared minus nine. So it was the standard uh, x squared function shifted down nine. So that should be where it's. Its vertex should be down here at negative 9. And then it shoots up through here. Boom. Boom. There's our parameter. Lots well, of glorious symmetry there. So we're going from 0 to 5. <coughs> I'm going to draw this a little further then. 4 or 5. Which is a little bit. I wasn't thinking about the 5. So 0 to 5. Area, there'll be a positive area. But from 0 to 3, apparently, we're going to get a negative area. So we are finding this added, that negative one added to this positive one. That's what we're finding. Okay. Agreed? does the whole thing for us. It's going to do that automatically. You don't have to play any uh, <coughs> games with it. So now we know what we're finding. Let's go ahead and compute it. Which do you think is going to be positive or negative? Is it going to be negative? For my uh, poorly skilled picture. All right. So what's the integer of x squared, which you said a minute ago? One third x cubed. First cube minus nine x. Minus nine x. Season called it there from zero to five. How yep. Not, not and x then to the nine. X to the ninth. Yeah. That wouldn't make sense. There you go. This wouldn't make sense. Because think of it. Right. You start with the, you start out with the number no, with no, no um, x. If any time you have a constant, right? What do, you, what do you differentiate to get a constant? Something like this, 5x. I differentiate 5x, I get 5. Oh, yeah, so yeah, working yeah, backwards, right. all I got to do is slap an x on it. You okay. a constant. That's right. So now we plug in 5, we get 1 third 5 cubed minus 9 times 5. So that's the expression with 5 plugged in. Now, this is a polynomial without a constant. There's no, there's no constant term going to come out of this thing. So once you put it in 0, the whole thing is gone, right? So I'm just going to write minus make that 0 there. It's pretty clear that writing zero substituted in for each x, that's going to be a zero, right? We have a polynomial with no constant term. <coughs> so we have 125 on 3 minus 45. So 3 does not go to 125, so we need to multiply both of these, uh, or I should say top and bottom, by 3. So we can get a common denominator. 3 times 45. 135. Okay. So we have 125 minus 135 over 3. Negative 10 thirds is our answer. So it was negative. The figure's not as bad as I thought. Yep. Negative 10 thirds. Okay. Um, there's no units with this? Not unless it's some sort of okay, word so problem or application that problem. Mean? That is the area. It's the net area. So that. So I mean, you could say units squared. It's always a unit squared because you're finding areas, right? Okay. Now this is the answer to if the question was asking for the area. It is. Okay. I mean, it's saying compute the. It's saying. Compute. You know, find the definite integral. Find the definite integral. Okay. But what is a definite integral? You should always remember. It's area. So area. Never yes. forget that. Yeah. So it's the area. It's the net area. So why is it inside the curve and not outside the bottom side of the curve? Why is it not this? Yeah. Because it's always between curve and x-axis. Oh, okay. So down here is not between curve and x-axis. Only in here and here is between curve and x-axis. Right? On the other Let's side, do another one. No, that's not between that side. 
Over here? Uh, no. Between x axis and curve. So you'd be filling in this. But you wouldn't fill in past that because that's not between the curve and the x axis. That's between x axis and space. Oh, yeah. Right. But over here, to, to the left of this, between curve and x axis, is in here. But down here, x axis and nothing. There's no lower bound. Okay. Yeah. The upper and lower bounds are always either the x axis or the function. Let's do another one with trig in it. <laughs> okay. All right, just uh, compute number thirty-five. Big deal. Don't have to draw anything. Don't have to interpret anything. Just perform the integration. The zero to pi on four of uh, secant squared x dx. That should be very straightforward, right? What do you differentiate to get secant squared? Tangent. Right, this is straight from 4.9. So this must be tan x. Evaluated at 0 pi on 4 and subtracted. I'm not sure why. Pi on 4. Pi on 5 had a lot of trouble. What's tan pi on 4? That's a good question. 1. 1. What's tan of 0? 0. So the answer is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. Thirty-seven. <coughs> we finally got to the easy part of the class, right? And this is this is simple now. Yeah. Yes. Take an antiderivative and plug in some numbers. Oh, it's ridiculous. I thought the rest of it was ridiculous. Yeah, the rest was. Yeah. I'm talking about chapter five. Oh, did the rest chapter five? Yeah, that's the one problem did the other day. Antiderivative. When you're taking antiderivative, you're taking most of the derivative of the derivative. Trick you're not taking the other ones. The end of the trick is taking the other ones. You're 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 taking Thirty-seven. <laughs> Integral of x to the negative three dx from negative one to negative two. Negative two to negative one. Negative two to negative one. Otherwise, we're going the wrong direction. Or I should say we're not going the usual direction. We're going the wrong direction per se. Does that go to the bottom? What go to the bottom? One over x cubed. Okay, that's a good way of looking at it. And that's no antiderivative he's doing yet, right? That's just changing it yeah, to have a good appearance for us. But I don't know what's going to help you, though. I mean, you want to use a power rule, right? It is true, it's 1 over x cubed, but I don't know that it helps you think about how to anti-differentiate it any better. Uh, I just want to use that reverse power rule, right? Raise the power up by 1. So what's what's negative 3 plus 1? Mm -hmm. Okay. Negative 2. So then you're going to divide by negative 2. And you're just going to evaluate from negative 2, negative 1. There is a small subtlety to this problem <coughs> that could be more important. I'll, I'll mention it in just one second because it could come up. It doesn't come up exactly with this one. There's a potential, but it didn't uh, work out. So now we plug in negative 1. So we get, now in this case, maybe it is better to write it 